had dogs before, uh -huh. but they weren't purebred or anything, and I really was looking to do something with my dog. Uh -huh. uh, and I loved Great Danes, and I did a lot of research. And what was it about Great Danes? <laughs> I like their temperament yeah. for the most part. Yeah, They're I like goofy. the goofy, the <laughs> aloofness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, at that point, you started looking for a breeder, and tell me about that. Um. I contacted a few. I did a lot of. I went to a few shows, watched them there. Uh, I did a lot of research on the internet and emailing back and forth. Yeah, was it hard to get into a good dog? Or it was. There was a couple kennels that originally I was looking at, and I contacted and emailed. And after a while, you know, the con communication kind of stopped. Um, but I met a really nice lady in Nova Scotia, and she's been really nice. Yeah. Now, how important is it that when you get that first dog that you, do you keep that relationship going or do you, do you look at a lot of different places to try to learn from what's worked for you the best? Um, well, my breeder is quite a bit of ways away, like all the way across the country. So mm -hmm. she was able to direct me like books and YouTube videos and things to watch. Um, the Great Dane community in Alberta really kind of took me under their wing oh, and gave, showed okay. me the ropes. Um, and then up, being up in Fort McMurray, there wasn't a lot of uh, court lasses or anything, but I kind of bugged the lady who had the training center there until she found somebody who had handled dogs before and was able to host a class. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> and so you, how many shows have you attended? Three. Three. Your yeah. first show, what were your thoughts, what were your feelings as you were getting ready to start that? Nerves. I yeah. was a bundle of nerves. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was really, really nerve-wracking. I had a friend there who was, she shows uh, GSP, so uh -huh. she was able to coach me a little bit. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So it's, it's good to try to develop as many friends that, that can kind of help you out there, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, your first time in going into the ring, tell me about that. Uh, Josie, I think, was really nervous. She wouldn't take bait for me or anything, which was kind of a good thing because she kind of just stood there, but she lacked personality, I uh -huh. think. We went in and we won best of opposite and best of winners on um, both days. Wow, <laughs> that's fantastic. So that got your spirits going and did you get it, get a rush off of that and it's like you wanted more and more and more? Yes, <laughs> but I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so then your second and third time, was it always as good or did things change a little? Uh, Josie started being really shy towards the judges backing up or sitting down whenever they went over her back end. Uh -huh. um, I still managed to get through it, but you could tell that she just wasn't behaving like the other Danes in the group, and right. I was getting second and third. Uh, so things were starting to go opposite direction. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So how did you find out about this workshop? Uh, I found out through a friend of mine. Uh, she has wine riners up in Fort McMurray and been been doing a lot of training with uh -huh. and she really recommended doing it so oh really yeah <laughs> oh that's good so you just called up and said hey i'm signing in how far did you drive to come here 14 hours 14 hours wow so you really want to do this yeah <laughs> i was at a, i was at a show um last weekend and Josie did, she got third on the Friday and Saturday and then uh -huh. we ended up luckily reserve on the Sunday uh -huh. um and I was like talking to my friend Megan and I was like, I need a trainer, like I, yeah. I, need, I need something. And so I debated talking to um, some professional handlers there and uh -huh. getting some classes like after, after the show. Right. Um, but the few people that I approached were, uh, they were pleasant, but not, yeah, didn't even tell. Yeah, you still kind of felt a little, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, so then you drive 14 hours to come here. Um, you don't know anybody here. No. You walk in, and there's all these people who have shown dogs for you know probably years and stuff like that. What kind of what was what were you feeling and thinking at that time? I was definitely nervous. Uh -huh. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I'm okay with laughing at myself, so I figured if anything, it'd be kind of a comical experience. <laughs> Um, I had a huge fear that I wasn't going to be up to the same par as everybody else and mm -hmm. kind of be left behind. Uh, That's common because you're <laughs> brand brand new. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then so we came out here with dogs and we started working with the dogs and what was going through your mind at that time? Just get through it. Just get through it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
um, I, I was, I don't know, a little bit skeptical. I'm like, okay, head straight, I get that. Uh -huh. But it's hard when you have a 140 pound dog. <laughs> That's, she's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, and she's, she definitely has some bouts in her staff there. I know. <laughs> but see, this is where people get frustrated and they give up because they want their dog to look good. Ah. Yeah, I know, I'm short. Um, so she started acting up, and again, tell me what was going through your mind at that time. She's going to be the worst dog here. <laughs> <laughs> she probably was there at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. But then, then what happened? Um, well, you took her for a little bit, and she started bouncing around trying to get back to me and I kind of felt that I'm letting this dog get away with everything that's why she wants to be near me <laughs> there you go good good don't tell me this dog's name is Tigger no it's Josie <laughs> <laughs> woohoo woohoo jump for joy Josie okay so I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna go I don't care where the dog is at and what the dog is doing I'm going to back away from my corner and go. Okay, and then after that? After that, um, while well, I worked with her for, I think, about 20 minutes, just working on, like, head straight and not pulling on the leash. And it was just crazy, the difference, even after that short time. This dog is probably going to throw a tantrum from hell when we try to do the head straight. But that is step number one. Once she gets this dog to hold its head straight, none of this silliness will keep going anymore. All right. And your dog's name again is Josie? Josie, yep. Josie. Why are you standing on me? You're not in charge of me. Come here, Josie. Come here. Okay. Mom, why don't you get over on this side? Ah, oh, it's not going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to take this collar, put it high in the top of the head, my two fingers, and I'm going to keep this head straight. And Josie's like, yeah, watch to see. Head straight. Good. Very nice. Good. Move your foot. Thank you. Ah, ah. Head straight. Head straight. Here comes the tantrum. Josie's now figuring out that it's like, oh, wait a second. What's going on here? You want to keep all the pressure off the neck. Throw your tantrum. That's fine. I don't care. Throw your tantrum. Okay, come around here. Good, 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 good. Okay, here's the tantrum. Head straight. Head straight. See, see this body? It's like nothing but tension. Uh-uh, head straight. Head straight. So here's where your problem is. Tantrum. Remember I said the tantrum? You are spoiled. Okay, come over here. Head straight. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. Head straight. Good. That was good. Are you done now? Because you're going to get really tired doing that. Come on. Good. That was good. Here we go again. See, this dog thinks that it runs the, the whole world right here. Ah, ah. Head straight. Okay, come here. Wait. Okay, I want you to take those two fingers. I want you to scoop from underneath. And I want you to put your pinky on there. And I want you, ah, ah. Oh, you're bad. Is this dog ready to show? She has four points. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But consistency. Yeah. Would, would this dog be sent to a group? No. No, not at all. Okay, you need to work on getting that head straight. I don't care what direction you're facing, but get the dog to keep its head straight. Um, does your body position matter with this? Like if the dog's... No. The, all you want to do at this point is get, your, get the dog to keep its head straight. Head straight. See this? All this is because the dog doesn't feel that you're the one that's in charge. So you're going to need to do this over and over and over again. You, you don't want any pressure on the throat. Okay. So all the pressure needs to be on the back of the head. So you're going to be pulling forward, and you're going to go head straight, head straight. Head straight. 
Now this is something that you guys can do with your dogs, kind of in between, getting that head straight. If you get this head straight, you'll find that the dog will actually gate better for you too. So I want you to go to that corner, get the dog's head straight, and then I'm gonna send you on a down and back. And let's watch the gate. So come back over here, pull this dog back a bit. Okay, set this one up right here and get the dog's head straight. Very good. Good. Uh -uh. Much better. Now give me a down and back. Just the way you were taught. Ignore the dog and just go. Just keep going. Okay, straighten out the lead when you get to that side. Get the dog's head straight. Get the dog's head straight. Okay, now bring your dog to me, ignore your dog. Get your hand in position. Don't raise your hand up. Just come to me. Very nice. Get the dog's head straight again. Did you notice that was a little better on that one? Okay, head straight. Don't just say head straight, make sure that head is straight. Okay, now grab the end of the lead. And I want you to back away from the dog and calmly just walk to the end. Turn, just keep going, keep going, good. Now get your dog's head straight on that corner. Make sure that's head straight, the dog knows that. Okay, don't let, yep. All right, now walk backwards and come back to me, nice and calm, don't look at the dog, just keep going. Good, very good. Okay, now I want you to keep practicing with that head straight even though we're not working with you because this is what you need to fix before we can move on to step number two right there. And it will happen. This dog will be changed by the end of this today, okay? All right, so take this dog, do the, get the head straight, back away from me. Don't look at it, no eye contact. Okay, grab the end of the lead. Do not look at your dog and take your dog around to the end. Just ignore that. Just flip the other way. Yeah, there you go. Just keep walking. What I want you to do while I'm working these dogs here, don't go too close. I want you to take your dog for a walk. I want you to stop at this point, head straight. Stop at that point, head straight. Stop at this point, head straight. And that's all I want you to focus on so we can get you to the next level. All right, sounds good. Yeah, you came back and she was gating for you. She was standing for you. Um, and you know, like you said, it was just you know maybe 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And as the day got went on, she just got better and better and better. Oh, absolutely. I've never been able to get her to stack for any length of time before. Wow. So it was amazing. Yeah, so how did you okay. Good, get that head straight. Okay, give me a down and back, please. Don't worry about it. Okay, back to me. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Oh my God, that's awesome. That, and that's just, what, a few minutes. That's it. Okay, don't do that. Because that's equivalent to me coming up, don't look, I'm going to beat your mom. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right. Very happily take this dog around to the end. I'm very proud of you. Good. Now, when you took off, did you back away from me or did you just go? Yeah, what, what did your dog do? Just took off. Let's try that a different way. I am so proud of you. Good, head straight. Okay, try not to do eye contact. Okay, now back away from me and take your dog around to the end. Good, 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 ah, good, good, good. 
How did you feel at that point? Kind of proud. <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel that, I mean, there, there's a lot of people that do a lot of training. Do you feel that, you know, and I do stress that head straight. Do you feel that, um, that it definitely is as important as, as I stress? Or? Oh, absolutely. Like, it totally makes sense. If you have control of the head, you have control of the dog. Now, do you think there's going to be any difference now when you go to these these the next set of dog shows with the knowledge that you have from coming here? 100%. It's not going to be her dragging me around the ring now. It's going to be her and I working together and, and working as a team. Some people feel that when they're doing the head straight that they're being um, maybe too demanding on the dog and sometimes they'll take some of the animation out of the dog or make the dog not want to show. What's your thought on that? Well, my approach previously was always um, kind of hold behind the head so it was all, the stress was there on her neck and a lot of times she's there and she's hitting her head up like right. this she's and she's fighting me and uh, the only way previously I've been able to find for her to be able hold to... On Somebody do an ah! Okay, or I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say that again. Um, well, previously, um, I've been holding the lead so it's been tight, like, tight around the chin and she's been, you know, nosing and lifting her nose up. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way I've been able to find that she would stay still for an exam was for me to really hold the head, like, hold the collar tight around the neck and be in her face telling her, wait, wait, wait. Right. And then just after the little bit we did yesterday, just holding it under the chin, you can tell that she's really trusting me and settling her, her head into my hand. And I don't think I'm gonna have to be like that anymore. Good. Most trainers would say, you need to get control of your dog. Well, no, you need to train your dog. You need to teach the dog that you're the one that's in charge. And putting it on a short lead is not training a dog, it's controlling the dog. What about the eye contact? Tell me a little bit about what you may have learned or thought from the before to what you learned yesterday about eye contact? Well, I learned now that we should avoid eye contact because I'm putting needless. The, the ring is already stressful, so right. you don't need to add that extra stress by. See, and a lot of people don't agree with that. A lot of people think that, you know, you're supposed to look at them and control them, make sure that they don't do anything bad. But what did you experience? It's just the opposite. Um, she works with me better if I'm not in her face. Good. Did you see that you guys became more of a team-like? Oh, absolutely. It just, it was amazing. All right. This is what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay, go ahead and bring her down and back, please. Okay, so palm out. You got it. <laughs> palm in, palm out. So you're just kind of walking. You need to use your... See your palm? Your palm is pointing the direction you want the dog to go. So if you want the palm, your dog to go through here, and then here I want my, my dog to go this way. So try that one more time. The dog's eye should be forward. Right. It's feeling the signal. If he's ga feeling that he's uh, gauging off of your body language. Okay, so you're kind of going like this, and like this, and like this. So the problem is, is everybody worries about what the dog is doing. What you should be worried about is your body. Because if you stay consistent, the body, the dog will learn to key off of that. But if we keep worrying about where the dog is and what the dog is doing, then it's never going to work. You have to trust your dog. And the dog will key off your body language. It's almost like you guys become... The sixth sense and start, you know, thinking and finishing each other's sentences and stuff like that. And, you know, eating spaghetti and together and... <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good, good. So you go through the motions, the dogs will eventually follow. Okay, now come back, do the same thing. Okay. So you gotta have, you can't be pulling behind. You have to have your hand in front. The dog has to key off that signal. Okay, so go. 
No, in front, in front, not behind. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Beautiful. Okay, around to the end. Not behind. Get that hand in front. Wow, look at the difference in the gait of this dog. Give her a hand. Beautiful job. So now I'm going to get lots of emails with you winning best in shows. And, and I stuff certainly like that. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do, me a, do me a big favor. Um, just say your, your name, the area that you're from, and that... Um, and give me the probably the, the funnest moment about what happened yesterday during the workshop. Hmm. Okay. Well, my name is Melissa Drover, and I'm from Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. And I think just the funnest thing was just meshing with my dog. It was. It was. I wasn't fighting her. I, you know, her, she was going, and I would slow down. She would slow down. There was no pulling my arm off. <laughs> It and was bouncing. just, yeah, oh, bouncing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Melissa, thank you so much thank for you. taking the time to, to talk here. Thanks.